What's going on friends? Harley Davidson motorcycles today are absolutely full of all kinds of electronics and as we saw last week you have to have the right specialty tools to absolutely really be able to do anything with your modern electronically controlled Harley Davidson. But if you don't mind getting your hands dirty using some basic hand tools, you love a simple reliable engine, then the good old Harley Davidson Evo engine may just be the best engine Harley Davidson ever made. Harley-Davidson's Evolution engine is arguably the best engine Harley-Davidson ever built. Now, it does have its quirks, but they're really not that serious, and quite honestly, they're not super expensive to fix either. The Evolution engine is just modern enough to be reliable and oil tight, and it still produces pretty decent power today. But don't get me wrong, the Evo really is no rocket ship, although you can make it into a rocket ship if you really want to, and we'll take a look at that a little later on in the video. But for a great street machine with solid, reliable power that can actually be upgraded for about the price of the tools that you're going to need to work on a modern Harley, the Evolution engine is really hard to beat. Guys, don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, I say arguably the Evolution engine is the best engine Harley-Davidson ever made because there's always going to be somebody that disagrees with you. But if you haven't noticed, when it comes to the twin cam engine and the new Milwaukee 8, all these upgraded modern motors, when it comes to fixing these new modern motors, we're always going back to the things that the good old Evo had. The Evolution engine came from the factory with the Temkin tapered bearing bottom end. And one of the first things we do if we're doing a full rebuild on a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8, or at least you really want to do, is to convert their roller bearing bottom end back over to a Temkin tapered bearing bottom end. So right there at the very heart of these late model technologically advanced engines, we're converting this new modern design back over to the good old design of what the Evo originally had. And this is right at the heart of the motor on the crankshaft. The twin cam engine was designed to address some of the shortcomings with the Evo engine by having larger displacement, better cooling, and more power. Now, while the twin cam engine did succeed in a lot of areas, it also brought with it a lot of unnecessary complexity and, well, a lot of problems as well. Now, one benefit that the twin cam did have was that it did with the larger displacements and allowed them to space the pushrod angles out a little better. That way, they weren't angled so harshly. They were just a bit straighter. But at the same time, when they used the dual cams, that larger displacement to do that, they went with that chain-driven cam design, and well, we all kind of know what happened there. There was a lot of early, there was a lot of failures early on, and well, basically, some motors pretty much shelled out because pieces of those tensioners plugged the oil passages and seized the motors. The Evo's single cam gear-driven design had proven to be basically stone cold reliable for years. So when it comes to the twin cam, automatically, what do we do to eliminate those tensioner failures and just basically having to replace those tensioner pads at different intervals? we go ahead and we convert it back over to a gear drive. Now obviously we're not gonna convert a twin cam to a single cam, so we do the next best thing. We drive the dual cams with a gear driven system. And with the gear driven system, this also delivers much more accurate timing. Now even with the new Milwaukee 8s, when that was rumored to be coming out with a single cam design, we all got excited about, hey, maybe this thing's gonna have a gear drive. Nope, it was still chain driven, plus it also had a tensioner in there, but by this time they've kind of already worked out the bugs with the tensioners. But anyhow, when it comes to a Milwaukee 8, one of the first things you're going to do when you want a cam swap, if you can, is go ahead and swap it back over to a gear-driven cam just like the Evo. Once again, on the Milwaukee 8, that gives you better timing. You don't have to worry about a tensioner shoe. But unlike the Evo with the Milwaukee 8s, you still have to deal with the cam plate and the oil pump being internal inside the engine. So that is an added expense, which you didn't have with the Evo. The Evos were really the first Harley-Davidson that really suffered at the hands of the EPA. The camshafts, the ignition mapping, the exhaust, the carburetor tuning, everything on these bikes was pretty much just one giant compromise, and not to mention the exhaust systems as well. They were pretty bad and pretty restrictive. Now with Evos today, you're probably going to find that the airbox issue, the tuning, the exhaust, all these things have already been rectified because who leaves a bike stock that long? But if you do happen to find a stock Evo that's completely unmolested and intact, even I would find having a hard time to tear that apart and change a bunch of stuff. But even if I did, 
I'd be neatly boxing up all the stock parts because those are really hard to find these days if for some reason you wanted them. So even today, we're still fighting back against the EPA by changing out air cleaners, putting on exhaust, and, well, retuning the ECM. We really don't have carburetors today. But if you think about it, the Evos really pioneered this. We were rejetting carburetors. We were putting on free-flowing exhaust, high-flow air, air cleaners. All this stuff was going on in the Evos before the twin cam in the Milwaukee 8 was ever even thought of. Now, as for the quirks of the Evo engine, they're not nearly as serious and they're dang sure not as expensive to fix as they are with the twin cams and the Milwaukee 8s. Now on any Evo, you might encounter some base gasket leaks. Well, I'll be honest, that's pretty much almost a given. And then in the 90s, they went to that crappy INA cam bearing. That was a, a disaster, but this is all easy stuff to change out. Now, then again, in the 80s, they did have some casting issues with the cases, and if you put too much horsepower in them, they tend to crack, but if you're not really modifying an 80s model, it's not an issue, and it's not too much of a serious issue on the late model Evos from the 90s. So on the Evolution engine, it's nothing too crazy, and not to mention the parts are very, very inexpensive when you compare them to the Twin Cam or the Milwaukee 8. Another big bonus with the Evolution engine is that you don't need a lot of specialty tools to work on those motors. When it comes to Twin Cams and Milwaukee 8s, there's quite a few different specialty tools you're going to need to actually do the job right on those motors. Now, for the most part, Evolution engines are all carbureted, which is simple to work on and easy to maintain. I would, however, steer clear of the fuel-injected Evolution engines because they use the Magneti Morelli. Excellent system. It's great when it works. But when it does start to have an issue, nobody's going to want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. So you're either left with going to zippers and getting a Delphi system or getting a basically a single fire ignition and converting it just back over to a carburetor. Which I have a whole other video on that that I'll pop up here. But if you have a Magneti Morelli system and you start having issues with it, best thing to do is just go ahead and convert it to a carb. So when it comes to an Evolution engine, really the only thing you need is a pass from the top of the motor down. Put some new, put new jugs on it, new cylinders, go through the heads, put some cams in it, go ahead and put a new set of lifters in because Evos like their lifters and with that push rod angle, about 40,000 miles seems to be about the magic number on that. But once you get all that done, you've got a good, solid, reliable engine that you can basically infinitely rebuild and it's going to last you year after year and serve you each and every year thereafter. Not to mention when you're going up and down that motor, getting everything freshened up, this is your opportunity for a fresh set of base gaskets and a chance for you to get that INA cam bearing out and switch over to a Torrington. It's a quick weekend job. If you got all the parts and barring you don't have any hangups, which who doesn't, but theoretically it's a quick weekend job. The motor's fresh and you know exactly what you have. You get you a nice aftermarket cam in there, get the carb jetted right, has some free-flowing exhaust, a free-flowing air cleaner. You got a bike that's going to put out 70 to 75 horsepower and roughly 80 foot-pounds of torque, maybe a little more. Now, if you really want to wake one up a little bit, when you're doing that, you could go to an 85-inch bolt-on kit. You could put a little compression in it, 10 to 1, maybe 10 and a half to 1. That's kind of pushing it, but it's not uncommon with just a good cam in there and that little bit of additional modification, maybe some head work, to see 100 horsepower and over 100 foot-pounds of torque. Although I would caution you on an Evo, try to be a little conservative. I'd try to keep that horsepower down under 90 with the stock cases. Just because of the cylinder stud spacing, it's so close. Sometimes with the higher compression, they would tend to lift the uh, cylinder studs out of the cases. So just use a little caution. Don't go too crazy with the stock cases. But what's funny is we spend all this money on these new modern Harley Davidsons only to take these bikes and put more money into them to start converting things backwards to what the Evolution engine already had. Now don't get me wrong, the Evolution engine is still solid reliable, puts out plenty of power, you can pick them up relatively inexpensively, the parts are inexpensive, they're simple and easy to work on. If you can use basic hand tools and follow a service manual and you got a little bit of mechanical knowledge, Evo is really nothing to work on. Hell, I'll even argue that the Evolution engine is just as reliable, if not more reliable, than the Twin Cams and the Milwaukee 8s even today. 
Shovel heads were great motors, they just weren't produced in the numbers that the Evolution engines are. And the Evolution engines have a remarkable aftermarket out there. You can get parts for an Evo engine all day, all night. You can even build one of these engines without one part from Harley Davidson. Not one part from Harley Davidson. You know, that might be a good thing. So guys, if you want a really simple motor that you don't need any fancy tools to work on, you can do all the work yourself in the garage, Evolution engine is definitely what you want. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. But guys, until next week, y'all enjoy the holiday weekend. Stay safe out there, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next Friday with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.